Hello, my awesome scientists. So tonight we are going to learn different ways to separate those mixtures and solutions we've been talking about. So you need to be on page 34 in your journal. Um, you need to get that handout I gave you in class, get it cut, glue it in, and you're going to watch a PowerPoint and learn five different tools and ways to separate mixtures and solutions. You need to draw a picture of each one as well as tell me how it helps us to separate and that again will all be on the PowerPoint. Okay, so tonight we're going to look at some different methods, and a method is just a way to do something. We're going to look at some methods to help us separate mixtures, like those mixtures and solutions that we made or started to make today in class. Okay, so there are many ways to separate mixtures. We can use strainers, we can use coffee filters, we can use magnets, we can use water, and we can also use evaporation. And you can see I have a lot of that, those things right behind me. Now the first one we're going to talk about is a strainer. Um, you may also hear a strainer call it a sieve. We call it a sieve mostly in science and at home you hear it called a strainer. This is something your parents probably have right in your kitchen and the purpose of a strainer is to allow smaller items and liquids to go through and then the larger things will remain in the strainer. So just like this thing right here, there's little holes in it and depending on the size of those holes, some things will pass through and then other things will stay inside the strainer. So that can be a useful tool to help us separate some of our mixtures depending on what's inside of them. Okay, and remember as we're going along to draw your picture of the, of the tool and then write down exactly how it helps us and that is right here on the PowerPoint. The next thing we can use to help us separate our mixtures is a coffee filter. Okay, and the coffee filter is going to allow liquids to go through, but the solids do not. Okay, and you can see there's a coffee filter right here, and if your parents have a coffee pot, they probably have some coffee filters. Um, and so the liquids, you know, they have the ability to go through, but the solids can't because there's not holes in there. The, the porousness is very, very, very tiny and will only let the liquids go through and not the solids. The next thing we can use to separate a mixture is called a magnet. You are very familiar with a magnet. And if you think back to a couple weeks ago, we learned about the three kings of nick, nickel, iron, cobalt, and iron has a son named steel. Those are our magnetic metals, okay? And then we have some items that are not magnetic, and that's like glass, paper, um, plastic, and then of course, we even have some metals who are not magnetic, such as copper and aluminum. So if I have a mixture and I have some magnetic items and some non-magnetic items, I can use a magnet like one of these to separate the magnetic things from the non-magnetic things because the magnetic items will attract and the non-magnetic magnetic items do not. Another way I can separate a mixture is by simply using water. Remember we talked about density, whether something sinks or floats. Less dense items are going to float, more dense items are going to sink. So if I have a mixture of, let's say, two solids, and I know one is less dense than water and one is more dense than water, and I can't use my hands to separate it, then I can pour water in there, and the less dense item will float to the top, the more dense item will sink, and my mixture will then be separated. And the last way that I can separate a mixture is evaporation. And I'm going to use evaporation for my special, special mixtures called solutions. And I can use evaporation to separate a solution because the water is going to evaporate and the solid will remain in the container because solids do not evaporate. The water will go up, the solid will stay in the cup, therefore my mixture, my special mixture, is now separated. Okay, so those are some different ways we can separate mixtures and solutions. The main thing you have to remember is you have to think about the mixed matter's physical properties before deciding what tool to use to separate. Think about what properties those ingredients had or those substances had before you put them together and use some of those properties to help you determine which tool you're, is best to use to separate it back into its original ingredients. And that is all for tonight, so make sure you got those notes down in your journal and be ready to separate mixtures and solutions tomorrow.